Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Mina Choi. And in this study, we explored how bodily movement of the telepresence robot affect the local user's perception of the remote users in robot-mediated communication. So by now, all of you in this room should know what ro telepresence robot is. Telepresence robot is a video conferencing system <coughs> mounted on a moving physical robotic base by allowing operators to achieve a physical embodiment and freedom of motion in remote location, these provide long-distance communication with a stronger sense of presence. So since telepresence robots uh, enrich remote communication, it is used in various settings like hospital, CHI conference, uh, schools, and workplaces. And as this technology is getting prevalent, researchers question how telepresence robots support essential in a personal process that ensure the effectiveness of face-to-face -face communication. And one component of effective communication is rapport, de defined as relationships of affinity and trust within a group or between a diet. And building rapport is really important in both our personal and professional lives because it is known to increase the quality of relationships and helps better task performance in team projects. So in this study, uh, we focus on uh, unique nonverbal behaviors that is available through telepresence robot embodied movement. In the previous study, researchers actually looked at the nonverbal processes that is available through telepresence robots, such as spatial configuration, body decoration, and height of telepresence robots, and how those uh, nonverbal behaviors or nonverbal processes are associated with report. Report. So. We look at the embodied movement of telepresence robot. So our first research question is, does movement matter? And prior research in uh, both face-to-face -face communication and computer-mediated communication suggests that these features, like movement of the communicator, is associated with affiliation, particularly judgment of attractiveness, similarity, and closeness toward the communication partner. So we first hypothesized in this study that local partner will perceive greater affiliation when the remote partner moves the telepresence robot. So those who are in the movement condition will report higher level of perceived affiliation toward the remote users compared to those who are in the static movement condition. And the effect of mimicry in face-to-face -face communication is extensively investigated. So research shows that people naturally and unconsciously unconsciously mimic the partner's behaviors, and the mimicry increased the closeness and liking toward the communication partner. And also, famous study in the agent-mediated communication done by Bayleson and E found that the computer graphic agent who mimics the communication partner's head movement actually reported high level of trustworthiness toward the communication partner than, the, when, than when the graphic agent randomly followed the movement or does not move their head at all. So following this reasoning, we also hypothesize that local partners will perceive greater affiliation when the remote partner mimics their behavior than when she randomly moves. So those who are in the mimicry condition will report high level of affiliation toward the partner than those who are in the random movement condition. And we also wonder whether the effect of movement vary depending on the individual characteristics. The first characteristic we are interested in was self-monitoring, self which refers to the extent to which an individual adjusts his or her behavior to situational demands. So for example, those who have high levels of self-monitoring act as a kind of social chameleons, habitually monitoring their environment and adjusting their social behaviors. Really, the lower self, self motors present themselves in the same way regardless of the social context. So, so high self monitoring requires sensitivity to social cues, which is maybe affect, uh, related with the perception of robot movement. So we hypothesize that effects of robot me movement on local partners' affiliation will de depend on local partners' level of self monitoring. And finally, we also look at the gender difference. Because we know from the literature that people perceive and interpret nonverbal behaviors differently depending on the gender. So we also know that there's gender difference 
in mimicry behavior and also gender difference in perception of the technology. So based on this reasoning, we hypothesize that the effect of robot movement will depend on partner gender. So to test these hypotheses, we conducted a three by one between subject experiment. So <clears throat> the participants were randomly assigned to one of three conditions, either mimicry condition, random movement condition, or steady condition. And they completed get to know you task for five minutes with a female confederate. And they were told that the confederate was another participant assigned to the same time slot. And to control for all the large interpersonal variabilities in physical, attract, um, in physical attractiveness and communication styles, the same female confederate actually communicated with participants in all three conditions. And after completing the get to know you task, they completed um, measuring homophily, the perceived similarity, and perceived closeness toward the remote user, which are two markers of affiliations. And we also measured moderators, such as self-monitoring and gender, using the scale existing in the previous literature. So for the experiment, we set up two rooms, and we had two experimenters in room one, communicator, a remote user, and those uh, who actually communicated with the participants, operator, who drove the telepresence robot. We had the actually separate operator because we didn't want communicators to be distracted by moving the telepresence robot. And in the room two, the participants were rated for the um, telepresence robot. And after completing their initial survey, the telepresence robot comes into the uh, room two, and they communicated. Um, for the get to know you task for five minutes. In the steady condition, communicators and operators look at the same uh, live, stream, live stream video, video <coughs> of the participants and the teleprocess robot didn't move at all. And the, during the mimicry condition, the robot coordinated according to, according to the participant's body orientation by looking at the same live stream video of the participants. And in the random movement condition, the telepresence robot uh, moved by referencing the previous participants from the mimicry condition. So the point of the random movement is the robot moves pretty much the same amount as the mimicry condition, but it does not coordinate with the current participant's movement. So here's a demonstration from the pilot study. The, um, in the mimicry condition, the robot's movement is really subtle. So just take a close look. It's very different from Brazil. It's something, from the light there? Yeah. Okay. Something very impressive because. Since the teleprint's robot movement is limited to the orienting left and right slightly, so the movement just slightly uh, changed their orientation as the participants actually changed their orientation left and right. And here's what we found. So first, we hypothesized that those who were in the movement condition would report high level of perceived homophily and closeness toward the partner than those who were in the steady condition. And the upper figure is actually the dependent variable is homophily. The lower figure's dependent variable is closeness. As you can see here, those who are in the movement condition reported high level of homophily compared to those who are in the steady condition. And that was not the case for the perceived closeness. So the first hypothesis is only supported for the homophily. And for the second hypothesis, we predicted that those who are in the mimicry condition compared to those who are in the random movement condition will report high level of homophily and closeness. If you can see the graph on the right side, there was actually no significant difference between the mimicry condition and random movement condition, both for homophily and closeness. So the second hypothesis was not supported. So while there was no effect of mimicry compared to random movement condition, we found an evidence that movement matters, regardless of whether it coordinates the orientation of the participant's orientation or not. 
And we only found support for the homophily hypothesis. Maybe the five-minute interaction is too short to establish closeness between the communication partners. In the third hypothesis, we predicted that effect of movement will depend on local users' level of self-monitoring. That was only supported for the homophily. So the x-axis represent the level of self-monitoring. As the level of self-monitoring increases, the, those who are in the mimicry condition and random movement condition reported high level of homophily, but those who are in the static condition reported lower level of homophily, which means the effect of movement matters more for those who have high level of self-monitoring as we actually predicted. So high self-monitors pay close attention to nonverbal process informing impression of their partners. And again, as we observed in the previous findings, perhaps the robot's movement can shape the perception of similarity among high self-monitors, but five-minute interaction is too short for them to establish closeness between the communication partners. Finally, we hypothesized the effect of movement will depend on the local user's gender, and this was only supported for the closeness. So the red column represent the findings for females, and black column represent the findings for males. Those who are in the steady condition actually reported high level of closeness toward the partner among females. But for males, those who are in the movement condition, combining mimicry and random condition, reported high level of closeness toward the partner. So effect of uh, movement only worked for men, but the opposite finding was observed for females. So maybe men are more sensitive to robots' movement while women find the robot's movement distracting. Or in the face-to-face -face literature that we know that females are more sensitive to humans' nonverbal behaviors, so it's possible that females are more uh, focused on the on-screen nonverbal behaviors while the males maybe focus more on the robot's movement itself. So that's why we found the effect of movement just for males, not for females. Another possible in, um, speculation for this finding is there's maybe romantic interest involved, considering that our, our confederate was a female only, so maybe male find the moving telepresence robots confederate as more attractive and close to themselves. So we conclude that movement matters and individual difference matters in developing rapport between communication partners using telepresence robots. So even with limited cues available with the present telepresence robot systems, nonverbal behaviors plays an important role in robot-mediated communication. And it is really important to see that nonverbal process persists in robot-mediated communication. And this is one of few studies look at, looking at the inform, informal communication settings. But workplace relationships involve uh, rapport in the sense that frequent informal communication builds coordination and commitment between members of a team. So we further invite future research in this social context as well. And finally, our study has an implication for designing communication technologies, possibly automating and utilizing such subtle movement in interaction would be easily applicable and help to build rapport between, rapport between telepresence robot users and the local users. Obviously, our study has some limitations and we suggest some future research on this because the limited repertoire of robot movement, we couldn't actually operate the full mimicry of the participant's movement. We could only mimic the orientation of body movement, so that was one limitation. So that's why maybe we couldn't really find a differentiation between random movement condition and mimicry condition. And we only had a female confederate, so our gender difference finding is somewhat limited. Maybe future research should also consider male confederate to see uh, real gender difference findings for this study. Finally, the mimicry's effect is actually more strong, stronger 
uh, between close relationships. But our interaction was just about uh, between strangers. So maybe future research should look at the effect of mimicry between the, by, by looking at the interaction between strangers, uh, between close relationships as well. Thank you for listening. I'd love to answer to any questions you have. Hi, um, Victoria Velotti Park again. Um, I was interested that you decided to be the